Welcome, Pixels and Flower, episode eight, with another horrific entry from all three of us there. I'm, I can't even apologize for that. Excuse it, bless it. That was just fucked. Okay. <laughs> but an extra, we've got a special guest on because we're liking three way episodes. Uh, we've got Tim Neal on, and uh, Tim has worked with both Reese and I in doing some of the art for uh, for Anubis and me and for Reese's Pixels and Sound stuff. So say hello, Tim. Hey, guys. How are you going? Great. Reese, you can say hello to introduce your new toy. Hey, yeah. I bought a micro cord. That's what I played the Air Quitaker on. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? Eric Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's that? <laughs> He's a sexy boy, I think. <laughs> well, um, what, what the the purpose of today was we wanted to go through some of the album covers we like the most and I guess talk about the importance of art, maybe how that's changed over the years because music nowadays and how it's consumed is a lot different to even like 10 years ago. So... We'll have a look at um, how, how it's consumed digitally and maybe talk about um, the importance of some of our things. I'm sure we're going to have different favorite covers. I know Reese posted his before and it looks like ours are not really overlapping too much, although we might have a Pink Floyd one in there. Um, Reese, did you want to kick it off? Sure. All right. Uh, let's, let's get the screen share happening. And I'll get up my first example. Uh, so the first one I have is... But one of my favorite bands, Death Cap for Cutie, and it's their debut album, Something About Airplanes. And the reason I picked oh. it, it's a very, very stark album cover. Obviously, it's just band name, album name, and one graphic. Yeah? That's, and that's one graphic scary. that is ironically not an airplane. <laughs> yeah. That's a little heavy handed. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, if you haven't looked, it's pretty, uh, pretty narrow line. So it was probably with a light hand. Just to... Yep. What have I done? <laughs> we don't want your Sunday afternoon back, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So what do you like about it, Reese? Well, I'm I'm very much a fan of artworks where there's one or two focal points and it's very much about those, not much else distracting from it. So this very much fits that mold, um, nice pastel blue color. Uh, and the, the irony of it, you know, it's a boat on an album called Something About Airplanes. It feels pretty raised to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this has been like 1% influence on my very dry humor. <laughs> and I guess it goes to show that it's quite subjective what people are enjoying. Maybe even the ones in here that we're saying like some of our favorites, the rest of us might not like. But I, I, there's some appeal about it, I guess. Yeah. It, it feels a bit memey to me. Yeah. Context of today. Maybe can you tell us a little bit about some of the other artworks that Death Cab for Cutie have done? Are they, have they gone for a similar look or throughout um, the rest of their career, or is that like an outlier? Uh, yeah, this one's definitely a bit of an outlier, and I think that that's why this one is an, a notable one to talk about because uh, it, it was actually when Death Cab for Cutie was more or less a solo project. Um, the producer later became... Uh, a member of the band, but otherwise it was it was Ben Gibbard as a solo project. And so I think, at least in part, this album cover would be so, sort of uh, a result of him not having a set uh, personality or whatever that he wanted to project out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, th there was no band that could be in like a photo or anything um 
there, there was not so much of a set musical style yet. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a generic uh, album cover for that purpose, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. I guess I've got, I've got one in a, on a similar theme uh, to that one that, that might work. Let me see how this screen share works. Tim might remember seeing this one and having his dreams crushed in dream. <laughs> <laughs> crushed over again. Yeah. But this, this to me is like one of those enigmatic album covers where it is just that one focal point that you're talking about, Reese. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I think that can work really well, or sometimes it can completely miss the boat. But for some reason, at the time this came really out. Really missed the boat, did you say? Yeah. Oh, gee. well, you weren't going to miss it, were you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> This is yeah. This is one of the ones I I think actually does work to have some kind of some mystery about, which makes you want to hear what the music's about because it gives absolutely nothing away about sound, uh, the, the sound of the record to me. I mean, you can say it's quite stark and minimal in a way that first Tesseract album, but I don't know. I think it's just I think it kind of has at least standard now for the brand, the brand of the band being a Tesseract and showing a Tesseract on there. In that way, so, when you break it down, it's kind of unimaginative, but. I, I think it actually encapsulates the tone of that album pretty well when you think about it, because just like in their music, especially on that album, there's a lot of space, you know, with the atmospheric ambient sort of elements, uh, but it's also dark and complex, kind of like that shape, the graphic that they've got there. The 4D cube. Yeah. Depiction. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I, I do think that does work a lot of the time that the if you can get something iconic enough and I'm guessing like you know examples like your dark sides of the moon that kind of thing it's very minimal iconic artwork that actually stands in your memory and this I guess they've used the tesseract logo or this this um yeah the, the hypercube and they've used that pretty much in every bit of their album artwork to come after that so they've used it as part of their brand probably yeah. lucky they chose that band they could keep milking it. Um, <laughs> If you'd like, I can um, pull up why I was so angry with <laughs> finding yeah, that does. album cover. So I I, um, the different worlds you're hanging in music-wise, you might not get exposed to. What's... No, that's exactly right. So we we all come. Well, I come from a very different mainstreamy background. I'm not a music head at all. I'm design and art and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so. Oh, I don't get to see these kinds of things. And um, when I tread on toes, it's completely by accident. Yeah. Anyway, so the um, the album was, it was going to be a single for um, Hitchhiking um, to Byzantium, the Anubis album. Um, and this was the, uh, this was the cover for it. Um, it was a whole bunch of interacting yeah. cubes. Uh, exactly like you'd kind of expose uh expect from the from the other one but um yeah took a lot of effort and then it's um and then it kind of fizzled out <laughs> the efforts were destroyed yeah <laughs> oh well what are you gonna do yeah no that, that's all right well if you you did go for something sort of similar in the end right it was like you, the whole idea wasn't wasted Oh no no no! Absolutely not. We um that was only for like a variation on the theme. The um the the actual final cover um was a, a very similar um thing. Uh, a little bit less um uh, a little bit less all over the place and a lot more refined. Um and so so this is kind of it. But we'll go through these later. Yeah sure. Cool cool cool. And I, I will just add that it is very much an honor to have Dan Tompkins as a guest on here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> going to Reece, sign up for an impersonation. He's great laughs on, scre on screen yet. This <laughs> doesn't play episode nine to be dedicated to the many laughs of Reese. Quarter tone music with Reese's laughs. <laughs> yeah. You want to show us your first one you got there, Tim? It was like one of your favorites. Well, look, I'm going to go in the same theme as you guys, and um, I'm going to bring it up um, in a web page because this album cover, um, like I guess, like you two, it doesn't say much about the music at all. Um, in this artist, 
it, it's completely different from all of the other album covers that have been um, uh, his previous works. Um, um, but the, the physical um, object of this album is so much better than the actual uh, digital version. So um, it is uh, David Bowie's Black Star. Um, and it's um, quite an amazing album um, when you when you look at it as a, a vinyl um, or you look at it as a CD. Um, but there is multiple layers of different matte surfaces and uh, black on black printing um, with the words interacting with photographs like you see in this one here um it, it's absolutely fantastic um it's it's one of my favorite album covers ever because of the experience and how it all kind of blends in as a single work and not just uh you know a graphic yeah, yeah. incredible i've never seen the full packaging for it like that i mean if oh, you it, if only digital you missed out on so much it's it's quite amazing and and one of the amazing things about it is oh hi race <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get the screen shed thing to come up, but it's a it hides from my mouse. Um, the one of the amazing things about it is um, when you uh, it's not just that it's not just it. When you leave it in the sun, for example, the UV light comes in and reveals like the black ink fades away and reveals uh, star fields and a whole bunch of things behind it. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs in this physical album cover. It's it's uh, quite an amazing thing. Um, I think that's only with the vinyl, but it's 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 um, one of the more and uh, I mean it's Bowie swan swan song. It's it's probably worth going over the top for because you know it's um and it's a really great album as well. Like um, it's got that's heavy jazz great. influences and um, quite far away from a lot of the other stuff that Bowie's known for over his fifty years or whatever he's been doing things. Yeah. I think it's a pretty divisive album, right? Like, if people are expecting the more pop edge Bowie, it's quite a confronting listen. But for me, it's probably my favorite album he's ever done. Oh, easily my favorite album of his, um, cover to cover kind of thing. Uh, previously, I think he's had really good, you know, really good songs on albums, but I don't think he's ever had quite a cohesive album as as Black Star was. So it's it's really iconic in that respect for me. If you haven't listened to it, Reese, you need to need to dig in, man. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, probably very different to what you'd expect of Bowie. Because like, there's really heavy jazz influence. I'm pretty sure you've got a lot of session musos to come on, and they they kill it on it. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, not to not to dig too deep into it, but um, he found the Matt's a um, outfit um, at a at a bar at a club or something like that. <clears throat> And brought them on board um, to. Okay. Uh, he got rid of his normal band for this project. Uh huh. I I think that I uh, like that that example <laughs> of the packaging and you're showing like the complexity of how you can experience it. It's way greater than any of the other examples I've got here. I mean, I, ha I have one um, which kind of is touching. I guess uh, you get you get a deeper experience when you actually purchase the, the album and then you get to look into the physical packaging. I, I'll give an example. Like, people will remember this uh, signature Yes cover, which pretty much is, again, one of the quite enigmatic covers. It doesn't really give you away much. Maybe if you're in a record store in uh, 1972 and you see this green uh, this green cover, maybe there's some mystery to, to you, especially when it's on a gatefold sleeve and you want to see what's actually inside, whether there's going to be something further revealed. So, yeah, it's quite mysterious. Absolutely. I, I really think it's it's extremely um, important to be a very strong graphic on its own. Yeah. But I, I don't know for you guys, like when the last time you've gone into a record store and you've actually just been going through, going through the racks and pick out something that looks great, I mean, I used to do that all the time. I would, I would do the blind purchases every now and then, purely yeah, based yeah. on the C, like the CDR. The art could sell me on it. But nowadays, I'm really only buying physical stuff of stuff I know I already like. I listen to it like on streaming, and I know the packaging packaging is gonna be good, or I want to support that particular artist. So I'm not really having that experience anymore. So I'm thinking this particular 
uh, <laughs> this particular artwork when you've got it shrunk down to like that's that's still way bigger than like a thumbnail you get in spotify right spotify that shows yeah. you size of oh. thumbnail. like i don't know if that's going to stand out nowadays i think that that's an album that could completely go go missing in terms of the initial appeal on the art now whereas when you have a huge, when you have like a 30 centimeter square with the green layer it's a much different statement it's saying but you are ultimately rewarded when you when you get it because within the slave you, you get like this really detailed I guess landscape which is pretty typical yeah of a lot of the Roger Dean stuff you're getting there and it does you can imagine opening this up and getting that as like 60 centimeters across like that's a that's gonna be a pretty decent experience getting that there and it's yeah taking the initial cover art to a new level. And when you put that music on, I can imagine at the time, 45 years ago, that would have sounded pretty exceptional. Mm. What, what about you guys? If you see a, a green album there, is it really going to jump out to you of, of all the other things that are there? I don't know. I feel like well, we've... Um, the, the funny thing is um, I've, I've been really trying to make green albums work. Yeah. And the things that I've been, the last two big works that I've done have been green, predominantly green, um, because I think it fits the sound, but also because a lot of the stuff that I've done has been blue and red and, and things like that. I'm a bit of a bowerbird, as you see. Yeah. <laughs> All of the stuff that I like is, is really blue. Um, but, um, I like yeah, that. I mean, um, if, if you have a look at the, the kind of what does, what does your... Um, recommendation page look like on like just apple music look at the size of those thumbnails they're tiny yeah like how are you going to stand out with that and things are so complicated um it, it really is um something that you gotta and you gotta work at this size as well that size yeah, yeah. That's tiny. it's um it, it, it's a challenge it's a design challenge um more than it is an art challenge to me mm. And then it's got to work as big as a t-shirt, like Reese's showing there. Yeah. Is there any, anything in particular, like a go-to technique you find that you were trying to employ to make sure that it does stand out a little bit more there or something you're keeping in mind to actually stand out in the, in the streaming services? Um, well, yeah, well, look, I mean, it comes back to um, the first time I met, um, met up with uh, the band Anubis and kind of my my pitch for wanting to make what would be a Tower of Silence. And that was to look around and see what was going on in the um, the kind of prog scene. And then going through and um, uh, making something that was resolutely different and something that was really simple to understand as soon as you see it. But once you look a bit closer, there's a lot more interesting things going on than your first simple kind of process of it. Did you feel like you had to model the styles of art that other people were doing in the prog genre or just, it was just to get a feel to know the, the uh, No, I, I actually, I really didn't like um, the stuff that was going on in the genre as a, just as a rule, it was very brown. It was very decayed. When was this? 2010, 11? Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, there was a lot of decay going on. There was a lot of um, uh, uh, like decrepit fonts um, uh, oh, going sad. going through dirt textures and artificial wear. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. It's not it, it's not honest. I think design should really be honest. Um, and and faking things is not uh, it's not a really it's not treating the um, the viewer with the respect that that you should. Don't like the fake grungy stuff, eh? Yeah, because it's not real. Well, that's that's it. It's... Things developed a lot from the initial ideas you had from the Tower of Science, at least from some of the band suggestions. It definitely a little bit. This was a, this was a mock up done at the time of uh, Tower of Silence based on some of the band images. I don't. I don't. The Tower of Ears approach. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah, th thank God for that one. <laughs> not not that thing. But um, what maybe one of the things I was thinking about, um, Tim, like how far, how important is it for you to try and detach the actual artistic idea you're doing from the music or the concept of what you're doing? Because clearly, like, 
the a tower of science basically is like a ghost story right about a young girl who's like trapped in limbo right mm -hmm. what stopped you from what stops you from doing a cover where it's got a little girl you know go, a ghostly girl that you know there's, there's at least a couple of levels of of ambiguity added to what you've done yeah well the uh, i guess the thing that i like to call is um i like to call it a level of abstraction and that's basically a wanky way of saying that you take uh, a, a story or a, or a concept an idea and then you break that down to a um a, a simpler thing so if you look at tower of silence um if you look at the um the actual artwork that's um that makes it up um tower of silence is a um the album about the the girl trapped in in a in a kind of universe that may be ours maybe hers who knows um but the idea is that we're not dealing with a girl we're dealing with her experience and her time mm. we're not dealing with um the environment that she's in we're dealing with an environment so the the whole idea was to take it to the most changing environment that we have environment that we have and and also one that that meant quite a quite a bit to me um so i was putting myself into it um and then getting a um a, a representation of her and her her experience so the the idea is the snow globe you, you've always got something beautiful in the snow globe um in the snow globe we happen to have a, a watch stopped in time frozen in space um which is to represent the girl um and it's kind of from the period is the idea so so we've got something just kind of there and washed up and 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 representing um the um the album but not giving anything away because it's something to be interpreted and also as i said it's it's an absolute design it should be something that you um are able to uh, it's it's something that's really um abstract from the piece mm. um and that way the viewer the the person can um interpret it however they like um, yeah i think that's that's important i guess some of the challenges for me in the past like with my other stuff with hamina some of the lyrics aren't as direct as maybe some of the, the lyrics are in anubis to tell the concept so mm. i feel like some of the artwork has had to hint a little bit towards the story more so that it wasn't just like they're saying like i'm making up the concept to go along with it something to support it a little bit and I've, i think i've gone for it in a little bit more of a direct approach as opposed to uh, maybe i've tried to do the level of abstraction the lyrics more so more than the the, the cover art so well i wouldn't discount it i think it's a big interplay i was um thinking about this before leading up to this discussion um the the artwork is something that gets developed kind of in tandem with the music um at least the work that i've done uh, with with you guys has been i've heard rough cuts as the music and had that kind of influence how i'm going to make the artwork and that really guides me down that way i live with the music in an unfinished state for sometimes months before it actually comes through as a, a finished artwork so it, it's it's something that's um not uh it, it's not a one-way street i i think it's um it's it's something that's really important for the art to listen to the music and um even for the music to um be able to understand and rely on the artwork as as a piece of the entire art pro product that, that the person gets at the end of the um sausage factory Man, I, I love hearing that. I, I love hearing that um, the music is actually informing it directly like that because yeah. i know whenever i hear someone interviewed talking about the final product of an album i hear that it was a combined uh collaborative approach so it just it enhances it for me uh, even some other examples, like on a very different level, they knew this. Someone's getting a bit of echo at the moment. Right? Maybe, did someone turn the sound up? Nope. No. Okay, a bit weird. Uh, this is a bit of a zany artwork here from Australian band Toe Hider. So, this is like very cartoon, like very childlike, very like whimsical kind of design. 
And I know that uh, the, the designer, Andrew Saltmarsh, is always working with Mike from Toe Hider to develop the artworks at the same time as hearing the music. And one of the important things, like I, I feel like it actually comes across in the art. It feels like it's a unified piece and they pretty much working as a tag team. And they're one of the people that lists like the band members as the designer and the, the musician, which is kind of rare. Uh, and I think it's I think it's great that they've actually had a long-standing partnership. I think that long-standing partnership with a designer is actually really important because it's happened with you, Tim, with Anubis. Like we've been able to work together over the course of a number of albums, and I think that's actually helped to define the brand of the band overall. And the same oh, with absolutely. Mina, we've had him there for every design, so kind of get a kind of get a yeah combined approach, and you can feel the brand develop over time as well. Absolutely, and and I think that's something that uh, um, that any time I pick up an Anubis project, whatever it is, um, I, I try to make it feel bigger. Um, that's 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 my brief. Simple, big, and um, uh, you know, it, it needs to um, represent the size of the music. I think. Yeah, that's a very good point because Anubis's music is very big and. You, you you wouldn't want the artwork to feel small in comparison. It's true. That's the Mellotron strings and quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> your, your long-standing art partner, Reese, has been Anton so far, right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Well, actually, it's about 50-50. First thing was Anton and his girlfriend, Perry. They collaborated on the EP. And yeah. then I had uh tim do the single and it's looking like uh tim will do the album as well right yeah this is the first i've heard of this i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> fish tank breath <laughs> <laughs> not interested uh Reece, right. you got any other examples you want to show man some other things that um yeah sure. from the blue ms paint <laughs> I might uh, jump ahead to what was going to be my last example, actually, because going back to what you said about uh, going into a record store and, um, you know, doing some blind purchases because maybe the, the artwork has uh, caught your eye or something. This, this is the first Anathema album I ever bought. I walked into a JB Hi-Fi. <laughs> I walked into a JB Hi-Fi and I saw this very bright artwork, one person in the distance. It was very eye-catching, and I thought that there's got to be some great music that accompanies this artwork, otherwise that is just false advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was welcomed by one of my favourite albums now and uh, what has become one of my favourite uh, bands as well. Yeah, same album with me, man. Feels to me, my favorite one by them as well. Yeah, introduced me to them as a band. I mean, the stuff before that I wouldn't have really, wouldn't have really taken uh, interest to, but that one there really converted me. Yeah, that sounds like you're on a stadium announcer there, Doug. Is it me? Am I a stadium announcer? Mm. There's something going on. Sounds, Sounds okay over here. Yeah, I'm hearing oh, something. I think I'm hearing my voice go stadium through Tim and then come back again. Ah. Uh, maybe. Maybe I have to maybe it's these things. <laughs> We're trying to look through some I, I, I saw um you had one in there where you sort of examples affinity. Did you want yeah. to talk about that one at all? Because I, I really like that, that cover as well. Alright, cool. I will I'll, I'll bring it up. at least they could feel like a nostalgia for me. And I find a lot of artworks that tap into that um, the memory of being down there are actually really appealing to me, even from music as well. It's connected yeah. to me at that, that early stage where I've really started to appreciate movies or music or artworks and I find a connection with you doing. Yeah. I, I Yeah. Affinity by Haken. I, I love this artwork because, and it's not something I typically find appealing, but it, it really works for this particular album because as soon as I saw it, you know, it, it reminded me of like all those really, really old PC games uh, and stuff like your Sega systems and stuff like that as well. 
Uh, so it, it transported me to a, a, a period in time, uh, one that predates me by a little bit, <laughs> but it, it transported me to a period, and it, and that that's exactly what the music does too when you listen to this album, especially, uh, you know, songs like 1985. I mean, it's right there in the title of that song. <laughs> I feel like the cover is the pure pairing for that music, though, right? Like, yeah. they don't make each other. It, it, it looks kind of a bit synth wave and on synth wave version, but I think it kind of couldn't have been done any better. Yeah. Even the green, the green and that, uh, that tan kind of color are pretty disgusting, but it feels but, like a lot of the time. Yeah, exactly. That, that's part of the, the aesthetic of the time. Yeah. So you weren't oh, even born when Sega Mega Drive came out, right? What was that? Sorry, you weren't even born when Sega Mega Drive came out, right? No, my first. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I was in 1993. My first console was a Nintendo oh, 64. <laughs> oh yeah, 64. That's still good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I've got any other examples here that are really going to stand out. I've got, had some other um, album covers here that have jumped out here before and the digital kind of platforms. So I'll just share it quickly and just go down really quickly. Yeah. Um, Eric Whitaker is a sexy boy. Yeah. Th this one this here, like, it's not really no kind of music at all, but it's just so over the top and colorful that I had to listen to it when it came out. That on. Um, uh, do you know this one? No, I don't. I don't. I don't even know what it is. What is that shit? Sacred? No, the face, the face looks, but I don't know what the image Oh, faceless. <laughs> By the standard metal logo. Yeah. I read the facilities. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there is no face in that cover art. So you, you feel like they're maintained? You could say it's in the face. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's like <laughs> multiple faces. Yeah. I kind of get. What's that dragon from uh, Hercules? I don't know. With, with the multiple heads. Hydra. Hydra kind of reminds me of Hydra. Yeah, from Hercules, that one. Yeah. Hercules. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Maybe that was the underlying concept that I meant. <laughs> but uh, no, just stuff like that. Like when I think some of these more uh, more bold color statements <laughs> come out in a digital way. Um, yeah. the, the chaos divine colliding skies when that was at least pretty interesting kind of dim, a, bit, a little bit of a different style of what i'm normally seeing so it's jumped out to me and uh in, in the form looks really good as well yeah and maybe one that looks really good on their actual uh album covers and vinyls but it's a bit, a bit lackluster in digital is this uh this highly detailed uh, detailed uh yeah. but imagine when, you, when you're seeing the browns uh, I think it kind of goes back to Tim's point that some of those uh, browner colors are not really eye catching sometimes. So when you yeah. see that at the at a much smaller size, it just isn't working really, does it? Oh, stupid windows, man. I can't get any smaller than that. Ah, but yeah, you you get the idea. It's very detailed. Sometimes too much detail. I don't know if it. I don't know if it always works on a, on an album cover. Mm, Maybe it's nice to throw something in an art gallery, but not necessarily for digital music consumption. Yeah. Did you have any other examples that you want to share, Tim? I'm sure you've got, you've got a well. I actually, I, I did have a couple, um, and I'll just, I'll just go through them, like, because they're all kind of in the theme. I must be in a bit of a rut at the moment. I'm not. Um, I don't really have that much, but um, I'm going through a really graphic phase. Even though the the things that I've done for um uh, for you guys have been fairly kind of deep and they've been you know uh, they've got they've got a real three dimensionality to them. Um, uh, the stuff that I'm doing that I really like at the moment is um, let me just fix that up. Okay, so we've got here um, this one's. Oh, there's Reese. Hang on. <laughs> okay. um, so, so this one's called um, 
I'll have to remind myself of the band name. Um, I actually, the reason that I've, I've got this one is because I downloaded it because of the album cover. It was recommended to me on Apple Music. It's Mirrored by Battle. Oh. Um, I really like it. Um, <clears throat> I really like the album <clears throat> because it sounds like the album cover looks. Yeah. A whole bunch of real instruments in a disco metallic glass and mirrored room. Um, that, that's that's what kind of music is it really? What what's that? Sorry. What kind of music is it? They're like math rock, aren't they? Yeah. It's been, it's been described to me as the um, the sound of rock and pop falling apart. Oh yeah. Uh, the the band is Battles. Battles. Yeah, Battles. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, the next one that I have is um, I have to get out of here to go. Um, In Color by Jamie XX. Mm. Um, this again yeah. is because it's just such strong statement. In, in addition to that, the, the physical package is fantastic as well. When you get, I, I actually went to buy the CD just because it's so amazing. It's just a true spectrum of colors. Um, uh -huh. And um, I, I just really like it. It's really super simple, but really, really, even, um, really great. It, it, it would work really well as a tiny thumbnail as well. Oh, that's right. It, it, it really does. Um, you poke it out, and um, and one of the cool things about it is the um, all of the singles that came along with it are in the theme. Nice. Um, so let's see, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Paul McCartney's new. Uh huh. Um, now, I'm not sure if you guys are. Um, familiar with this album, but um, I think this is about 2011 or something like that. And um, it, it's a really great album. It's got some old, some new sounding Paul McCartney. If you don't like Paul McCartney, you probably won't like this. <coughs> but this is a, a photo of the physical installation. It says the word new, and it also doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Um, it's really simple, really well executed. Um, it doesn't look like a Paul McCartney album, but no, it completely um, describes the music if you've ever listened to it. Okay. Th does it have a bit more of a an electronic vibe, that album? Yeah, I think he had about seven producers on the album and um, used them as kind of instruments. Okay. If that makes sense, it looks very yeah. modern. Hard to imagine. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. In Korea, sixties and seventies. It absolutely wasn't un unmodern. It wasn't old. Um, the last one I've got is um, a, a way better album cover than the album itself. Is um, uh, YouTube's No Line on the Horizon, which is an artwork by um, Hiroshi uh, Sugimoto, um, and. Um, I just love this one because it's a, a, a giant classic dinosaur rock band. And this was it. Yeah. Um, I think that's really um, important. And more importantly was how they dressed it. Um, this is one version of the CD that kind of came out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this fantastic fractured font as a sticker on the front and the equal sign that kind of came along. You can't see it here, but that's like a holographic sticker that, yeah. that goes on. It's like things that just layer up and kind of like make the thing more valuable as a physical object than a, um, a, a little album, a little icon on your uh, music app. Um, that sort of thing, it, it reminds me, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, the uh, the album artwork for Lateralis by Tool. No. Yeah, I've seen it. You want to bring it up, Reese? if you got it there? Uh, it's not one of my examples, but I'll quickly do a Google search. Tool, Lateralis. Uh, but basically, um, physical packaging 
what you see on the front is this artwork oh. here. Well, actually, that's probably a better representation of it, albeit a bit small. Um, but you see that artwork with all of those many different layers. And as you flip through the booklet, uh, it takes away one layer and another layer until eventually you get to the last page. I believe it ends up with just that anatomical figure there. Mm. Yeah. That would cost a bomb. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, all transparent pages and, of course, Man, even getting plain color pages is expensive. When people add these extra glossy effects or things where you kind of break into the paradigm of standard album presses, it must yeah. cost so much money to press. Oh, yeah. Like the Bowie one looks incredible that you were showing before. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think we're I mean, using the elephant in the room at the moment, though, guys, with um, album colors, and we, we haven't touched on it. And it wouldn't be a complete conversation with Tim if we didn't touch this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's so oh, aesthetic. God. It's that not an aesthetic, it's perfection. Good or bad? I mean, what's the point of an album cover? <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I think I have a serious made. question. That's not the actual version. Sorry? That's that's not the actual Forum Shop album cover. Oh, really? No, um, I don't oh, think so. Well, anyway, online has had that as the album cover. Oh, maybe I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. Oh, some, I think this is actually. Oh no! Okay, okay, hang on. Um. Okay, there's multiple versions, uh, apparently. Is there a more serious one? Less uh, no, it's just that I, I've just seen it without the face um, on the on the bust. Oh, didn't we have that one already? The faceless. Oh, God. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but look, uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, it's uh, probably. But in in all seriousness, that's one of my favorite things to listen to. <laughs> that <laughs> album. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and it's always awkward when I'm at work and it shuffles on in the office. <laughs> oh, you got shared music. Oh, I, I just run my iPod through the speaker at the office and people can fight me if they want to take it off me. What about this one? Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> I don't think if there was maybe a, a synthwave version of yeah. Floral Shop, but um, it doesn't really suit I sort of feel like as much as the, the vaporwave stuff kind of gets a bit of a laugh, there is some musical quality there if you find the right bands. And yeah. the, the artwork and the design, as much as it can be laughable in some contexts, it's actually pretty good fit with the music. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard of this band before. Absolutely. You guys seen this one before? I mean, they, they overdo the Japanese yeah. a little bit to fit in with this uh, the vaporwave thing. But, uh, this this album is pretty incredible. I would recommend it. Pretty much in totally totally ambient, a very very long and drawn out, and just very good. Um, I guess chilling out music. Mm -hmm. It's good. I I often get to the end of that album and kind of go, oh right, it's been an hour or whatever it's been. Um, exactly. I feel as yeah. though it's music that's equally as good to like do work to or study to. As well as it is like trying to go to sleep too, as well. Oh, it has a lot of purposes in the way. I didn't really know what's called. I was typing in 2014 whenever I want to listen to it, and I looked at the album cover. So it's iconic in that way for me. Yeah, it's it's quite amazing. I think um, the um, I just brought up um, as a, as a kind of case. This is what um, Jamie XX is um, like music library looks like right. it's all the same thing in different um covers it's it's fantastic it looks great it, it all kind of fits it's um, very cohesive it's very much a solidified brand yeah, yeah absolutely and i mean it's only the one thing um but it, i think it's i think it's pretty cool yeah 
And what we do, we'll try and get some examples of all the music we've had today and we'll load it up into a Spotify playlist again. And maybe you want to make an Apple Music playlist as well, Tim. You can link it up. I can do that. Uh, in the description. And uh, people can have a listen to it and they can see what the album covers like in that small form there. And maybe they can dig into the albums we've talked about today. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to listen to the ones that you, you've suggested, Tim, because I haven't heard of a couple of them before. So, Reese and I probably got a bit more overlap with our tapes and I've heard about all the stuff he was sharing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird that people would have to open up their taste to me because I am as basic as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> have you got anything you want to plug before we, before we finish up, man? Anything you're working on at the moment or anything you've done recently you'd want to have people check out? Mm, um, oh, well, I guess I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff with, with you guys coming up, so um, keep an eye on your pages, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess you did something a bit different as well with the blank display, guys. Something quite different for your style. It was more of a traditional band photo type uh, album art. Yeah. Uh, well, even then, kind of. Um, so, so blank display is a is a different kettle of fish altogether. Being mm -hmm. um, kind of uh, uh, you know a solid pop punk band. A, um, their their previous designer had an idea um, and didn't execute on it that well. But um, this was this is where it got to. Um, there's a few things that that come in this. They had the idea of that that kind of um, heart love heart hand thing, um, and they had the idea of um, kind of the three of them being on the cover somehow. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of this album is, is um, very, very personal. So I wanted it to be uh, a kind of very personal album cover, um, kind of uh, a bit of a protection, but really wearing your heart on your sleeve kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but in the background, you can you can see the um the scan lines of the TV kind of thing it's all kind of affected um it's it's a little bit more heavy on the effects than i'd ever generally go a little bit more graphic um but yeah a lot of their stuff was um photo um based studio based kind of things um, but i think it turned out really well for the album and i, I think it turned out nicely it suits them well and i i always love when i see that artwork too because i think all, all, all three of us were involved in some way with that record, yeah. weren't we? Yeah, so it, it's yeah. a pretty special one for all of us. Well, again, that's that's another one of those things where I've, I've been able to come into a project. Um, at this case, it was really late in the game. Um, but I've been able to um, get to know those guys and I've been able to uh, shoot their shows. Um, I've been able to... Um, you know, produce this artwork for them and make another physical thing. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that not a lot of people get to do. The, the best thing about it, um, just from my point of view, is when you get um, 500 of these things in a box and you get to see your mistake that you forgot to take out 500 times in a row, but yeah, <laughs> no one else will notice it, hopefully. <laughs> Do you, do you care to divulge what the mistake was? <laughs> um, oh, we always go through multiple um, proofreads and things like that. Yeah. Spelling errors, things that just didn't get lined up in the final print because we aren't very good at things. Um, which album is that that you got there, Doug? This is one of my own personal mistakes that I have to live with. I think I have to confess to it on, on air, otherwise I'm not going to live with myself. Okay. So uh, when we got the Hamina stuff done, this one, Nebulae, we got Tristan, our art guy, to do the whole design for it, but the text layout and that kind of stuff was stuff that uh, I did. Um, except for the track names on the back of the album, Tristan had put that together. Isn't, isn't, are you guys seeing this mirrored at the moment? Uh, no, no. Yeah, I think it's... That's, that's the right way around. Right way around for you, okay. It's coming up mirrored for me. Um, yeah, yeah. So the he put the, the track names there. So that was the one part I wasn't 
reading over three billion times like every part of the booklet, making sure there was no grammar mistakes, leaving out any commas in Photoshop, that kind of thing. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, on the bottom here, some otherworldly is spelled otherworldly. Oh, no. all the impressions of it. It's, it's kind of ironic too because you you meant yeah. to put another word there. You know I can eject you from this conversation, right? <laughs> <laughs> and to top it off, I never re realized this until um, hyper fan uh, Shane Ledbetter looked at this, but underneath the CD, it has just some information about the product. Like, you won't be able to see it there or anything, but you know the text is uh, on the edge of the yep. album here? Yeah. You might be able to see it there, actually. The guy, I noticed on the documentation when he was invoicing me, he spelled my name wrong. D Douglas without an O, and somehow it made it to the CD as well. What? <laughs> like the CD. That totally Douglas. embodies the joke. What do you call a, a guy without a shovel on his head? Douglas. Goes up. <laughs> That's awful. That's it. He's gone. <laughs> <I'm actually laughs> <here>. <laughs> No, that's a good call. Yeah, it was a good well call. Observed. Man, I'll, I'll wrap it up with you now, though. Thanks so no much problem. for being such a great guest uh, for today. It was, it was a good chat, and I uh, got to look at some good music. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Reese is just dying somewhere. <laughs> Thank, thanks so much, man. Uh, but, um, I'll just, just stay on after we finish up, and we'll wrap it up. Um, maybe uh, you want, might want to lay down some of your beautiful guitar music as we finish up this episode. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Didn't go get that. Oh. There we go. You say beautiful music. Yep. <laughs>